Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to look at solving rational equations. So let's go ahead and get our notes out and we'll get going. Remember during the video, if you should be following behind to pause the video and get caught back up so our notes are complete. And if you didn't understand this something the first time, rewind the video and listen to it again. Sometimes it takes two or three times before we make the connection. Okay, our objective for today is students will solve rational equations. Um, this is not a new topic. We've covered it once, so this will be just a quick review. Okay, let's begin. Our first problem is negative 9 over x squared minus 9 plus 2 over x plus 3 is equal to negative x squared over x squared minus 9. Go ahead and pause the video and write the problem down and we'll get going. Okay, when solving rational equations, the key or goal is to get rid of all the variables in the denominator. We cannot solve for x as long as it's down in the denominator. So we're going to do that by clearing out the fractions. We're going to do that by multiplying each term by the LCD. So that's our first step. Find the least common denominator and multiply each term by it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want the LCD. Okay, and to find the LCD, we need to factor. We have an x squared minus 9, and that's a quick and easy factor. I recognize that to be a difference of squares. Our middle term is factored, and our right side of the equation is another x squared minus 9. So it looks like we have some quick and easy factoring here. Okay, so our LCD, as we look at each term, we're going to see that I have an x plus 3 and x minus 3. Same thing over here. This is just an x plus 3. So it looks like our LCD is going to be the x plus 3, x minus 3. And this is what we're going to multiply each term by. Okay, if you're having trouble with finding least common denominators, uh, make a note of it, and during class, come see me, and we'll go over that step. Okay, let's multiply each term by it. Now, what I like to do is I like to simply write x plus 3, x minus 3 by each term, and this helps remind me that I need to distribute it to each term because I'm, well, already distributing it. So it's just a way for me not to make common errors of missing terms when I multiply. So I can see now with cross canceling or dividing out that x plus 3x minus 3 divides out with x plus 3x minus 3, and I'm left simply with a negative 9. Plus, same thing here, the x plus 3 divides out with the x plus 3, and I'm left with the 2 times the x minus 3. Bring down my equal sign, and all those divide out, and I'm simply left with the negative x squared. So by multiplying each term by the LCD, we cleared out our fractions. All our variables are now in the numerator, and this looks to be a quadratic, something we know how to solve. So let's go back and use our solving techniques for quadratics and figure our answer out. All right, with a quick simplification, this is going to be negative 9 plus 2x minus 6 is equal to negative x squared. Combine some like terms on this side, it looks, or the left side, it looks like we have 2x minus 15 is equal to negative x squared squared. And solving quadratics requires me to set everything equal to zero. So with some algebra, we'll move the negative x squared to the left side by adding it. So that's x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to zero. So after we multiplied each term by the LCD, we came up with an expression after we, or sorry, equation with no variables down in the denominator. After simplification, we notice it's a quadratic. We set it equal to zero, and now we're ready to use quadratic solving techniques. We can use factoring, completing the square quadratic formula. This looks to be an easy factorable one, or factoring one, so let's go ahead and factor it. All right, looks, this will be x. We're looking for factors of negative 15 to add up to positive two. That's got to be the 5 and 3 combination. 
with the five being positive and the three being negative. Now, as we go to solving, we can say x is equal to negative five and x is equal to positive three. These two appear to be the solutions to our rational equation. So I'll go ahead and write them right here. x is equal to negative five and positive three. But with rational equations, we have to um, look at the fact that we can't have division by zero. And sometimes our values of x's that appear to be right will give us division by zero. So we have to check for extraneous solutions. All right, I think I misspelled that, so we'll do the old math guy trick. We'll abbreviate. So this will be extra extraneous solutions. And we can find our extraneous solutions by any value of x that will give us division by 0. So I'm going to look at my LCD, and I notice the two values that will give us division by 0 would be when x is negative 3. So all I'm doing is setting each factor equal to zero in solving, and positive three. And right here I notice I have a positive three, and it's in our list, so positive three, if I substitute them back in and check, will give us division by zero. So positive three is extraneous solution. Our correct answer is, our only answer is, x is equal to negative five. Okay. So, if you have any questions, remember to re-listen to some parts if you didn't understand. Uh, write your questions down on the side, and I will answer them during class.